I would like to call to order the uh, meeting of the Community Mental Health of Iowa County. And beginning today with our invocation, we all have Mr. Dave Farnett. Sure. Would you please join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we come to you uh, today. We ask that you help us to really be able to focus on our agenda and what's before us. And we have limited funds and, and lots of people in need, and I pray that you give us discernment and wisdom uh, to do what's best for most people, and uh, I thank you for that. May we all be uh, slow to speak and quick to listen, and uh, we pray for your blessing upon this meeting and all our decisions, and I pray in the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Thank you, Dave. Um, next on the agenda is just Attention to our mission and vision statements. I'll give you a minute to read those again. And then we're moving on to item four on our agenda, which is public comment. Um, and I would just ask that you please limit your comments to three minutes and um, speak loud enough so that we can clearly hear you. Um, it was suggested that we have a podium. We have placed a table in the center for that reason. You do not need to use it, but if you feel more comfortable having a place to set a paper or something, you're very welcome to use that. Also, if you would please spell your last name so that we are able to record who made the comments and indicate what township you are from. Are there any comments from those first in the room? And then we'll go to the online. Uh, Barbara Van Parsen, V-A-N-H-O-R-S-S-E-N from the city of Grand Haven. And uh, I'm here really to extend a personal, my personal invitation to come to the open house at the Momentum Center on December 5th from 4 to 6 p.m. Uh, we're really celebrating the fact that the MEDC has approved a RAF grant for us uh, in the amount of $700,000, which is allowing us to move to our whole phase two in the new building. Uh, so not only are we more accessible, more visible, uh, more flexible and able to serve our members better, but now we can add the sensory room, we can add the shower and laundry facility, uh, we can expand our office space and just make the whole traffic flow better. Uh, we're working with the architect right now to figure out exactly what that flow is going to look like, uh, but we'll have that December 5th. So I hope you'll join us and get that insight right away. Uh, we'll have a short program at five o'clock, which will uh, go over those plans and also update everybody on the capital campaign. Uh, right now, we have about $400,000 we're still working to raise. Uh, so please join us December 5th, anytime between four and six with a small program at five. Thank you. Thank you. Are there others who would like to comment in the room? Um, my name is Julie Norkley. I live in Grand Haven Township, um, N-O-R-K-O-L-I. Um, you have an item on your agenda today concerning the Ottawa Community School Network. And I have um, some concerns about this program. I believe the money in your budget goes to supporting the um, salary of a school coordinator. On the website of the Ottawa Community School Network says it was um, formed to integrate various health and community supports for students and families in the Ottawa area into one seamless system delivered through existing school-based facilities. Um, so this concerns me because I believe schools should focus on education and not be like a one-stop shop where you can bring your kids um, you know, to, uh, transfer the duties of the parent to the state. Um, the website for the Ottawa Community School Network also says that members must work together for collective impact. 
And it says it supports the development of a full service community and within the collective framework. So there's a big emphasis on collective. Um, collective to me means socialism, communism, collectivism, um, stakeholder capitalism seems to be the new buzzword in America for collectivism. Um, but I prefer traditional capitalism. Um, I understand that the coordinator has a role in both social emotional learning in the PBIS program. PBIS is positive behavioral intervention and supports. Um, the overarching goal of both of these programs, again, is collectivism. In Grand Haven, the PBIS system has resulted in a party cart. Um, it visits classrooms and it hands out treats like donuts or whatever to kids that get to their class on time. I think that's, you know, these are high school students we're talking about. So um, what are we doing here? The coordinator is also involved in mental health screening and referrals, which seems kind of like a conflict of interest. Um, I'd like to know, um, how is this program overseen if community mental health is funding it? Who's overseeing it? Uh, it seems like it's operating without a lot of transparency. I don't think this, I think this program is destructive to American society, and I urge you to take a close look at this program, know what it is um, before you agree to fund it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the room who would like to make the comment? Mm -hmm. Um, my name is Jenna Vipon, V-I-P-O-N-D, and I'm from uh, Spring Lake Township. And I am sharing um, what some another member, Oliver, has wrote, um, and he gave me permission to share. Um, he said, I have been a member at the Momentum Center for just about a year. This past year was easily the worst year of my life. I was juggling multiple major life changes and was struggling to manage. I needed to rebuild my entire life, and I did not know where to begin. At the Momentum Center, I found a place to heal, to grow, and become comfortable with myself again. I was immediately blown away by all of the kindness and grace that was given to me. I couldn't understand why these people, why or how these people were so nice to a person like me. I made friends when I felt outcasted and isolated. I was loved by them until I was able to love myself again. I will never feel as though I have repaid my debt to the Momentum Center for enabling me to get back on my feet. Our community needs a place where vulnerable, vulnerable people can seek refuge from sometimes harsh realities of life. This building and organization is not tailored to anyone specifically, but for everybody who may need it. It is impossible to predict what might happen in life, but we can plan and set up safety nets to catch those who are falling through the cracks. What happened to me could happen to you. It could happen to anybody. So I will take it forward and volunteer just in case that person going through the hardest time in their life can find what I found and take back control of it. I implore you to renew the Momentum Center's contract for the betterment and strengthening of our community as a whole. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who has a comment today? There will be another opportunity. H I L L I P I Without my lamb, I lost people of faith. People of faith. Thank you. Thank you. Is there someone else? Yeah. Hi, my name is Lucy Greenwood. I have a whole speech, but I'm just going to bring it. <laughs> could, you spell, could you spell your last? R E N. W O O D. And you're from Grand Haven Town, Grand Thank Haven, you. the city of Grand Haven. Thank you. I am um, go we go to I go to Momentum and um 
before I, before I got to momentum, I really didn't have any friends. Um, momentum has been an uplifting um, place that I could go to to make friends with all the staff and everything. Otherwise, I would be left alone because I am not in the same age program right now. I got let go. Um, but I've been living on my own for um, 21 years without the CMH program. Um, but we have programming and other things that we do at Momentum that will help uh, help everybody that goes to Momentum and um, everything. So thank you. Thank you. Where are you going? <clears throat> Hi, my name is Eileen Herndon, and I and I live right in town, and I have a cat, and that's all I have for company. So um, I go to the Momentum Center to be around people, and they have activities. They have they have. Uh, uh, they have pool, they have games, and they have all kinds of stuff. People on outings if you sign up. And the first person that introduced me to Momentum Center was Barbara, right over there. She told me about it. I was there when they were on at uh, over by on your at first building on Seventh Street, and I'm near Rondeville. And then whenever I can, I walk, or if I take the bus. But it's a safe place to be, and it's a nice place to be. I mean, could you spell your last name, please? Can you spell your name? Your, spell last, your last name. name. I think. Yeah, we just record who has given comment. So, can you spell your last name, please? H a r n d e n. All right. Thank you. And I can speak. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Katie Eiswald, E I S W A L D. Um, imagine your whole social interaction is built in a community. That community is being threatened, and there is a possibility that the community is being taken away. My name is Katie Eiswald. I am a resident of Holland, and I'm here to speak about the Momentum Center and the reality that taking away the funding would mean to me and many other people who attend the Momentum Center and all social, social rec programs in general. It would mean that I would not have a consistent support system. I would not have a place that I can go and be around people. I would not have a place to go to do my favorite activities like crafts, meals with friends, and social interaction. Without the Momentum Center, I would not be alive. They have prevented me from being alone and in my thoughts while I was in my darkest times. They have gotten me help when I needed it. I am sure that other people also feel this way. Please continue to fund the Momentum Center as not doing so would have detrimental consequences. Thank you. And I may have missed it, but where did you say you're from? Holland. Holland. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> uh, Todd Kreischel, Holland Cotton Ship. Um, I just recently joined uh, the Momentum Center. Uh, but over the last 15 years, I've worked in several capacities um, at the Holland Rescue Mission and the shelter, at the jail, working with kids who are suspended and expelled from school, and a lot of mental health issues. Um, my primary identity is I'm a follower of Jesus. And sadly, it's been my experience that a lot of followers of Jesus, the people that I've worked with at the shelter, homeless kids, homeless adults, people coming in and out of jail, people who are homeless, don't find a home in our churches and our community. And so I joined the Momentum Center because they are reaching people who need help. And I work with people from different faiths, different lifestyles, different ideologies in mind, different beliefs in mind, different decisions that I would make, but we're human. And where are people supposed to go um, if not there? I believe it should be the church, but the church is failing. It's just my broad stroke on that. Um, it's been my experience being in West Michigan for the last 30 years. I would encourage you to continue the support for the Momentum Center. Um, and if not, where will those people go? And the answer to that question is nowhere else. 
And so I would encourage you strongly, while you may have differences of opinion with maybe some ideology or lifestyle choices or whatever, people still need help. People still need care. People still need community. And I would encourage you to continue to support the Momentum Center and the fine work that it does in our community. Thank you. Are there others in there? I'm Bruce Gordon and I'm from Grand Haven Township. I'm a uh, volunteer. I teach art and I'm also a member. And one of the big <clears throat> programs in our momentum operation is art. Okay. So have um, <clears throat> the good grace to fund us still because um, make a decision, make a decisive decision, okay? Don't string us along like you have, because there's ethical problems there. Talk to each individual, the board right here, talk to each individual member and talk to staff, okay? Can I talk to you after this meeting's over with? No. Please? As to what the individual visceral needs are, and I see that through the lens of art, a visual medium is, medium is very important, okay? And you got to open it up and talk to each individual because they each have a lexicon of how they perceive and how they take and understand momentum. It's not just some general abstract meeting that you exchange a bunch of bureaucracy like what you do. And I'll tell you, you have to keep visual art in a society. Visual art is a civilizing force in a society. And momentum is a big promoter for that. And come and look at society through the lens of art, and you'll see it's a very civilizing force. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any others in the room who would like to speak today? My name is Andy Embrace. Um, we need to keep the momentum center going because I've been in it for like six years. The staff are good and we got to keep it open for everybody. Angie, two things. Could you please spell your last name? Yeah. D E V R I E S. Thank you. And where are you from? The city of Grand Haven. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else in the room who would like to come? Joseph Carmoli, C A R M O L L I, Grand Haven Township. Community mental health um, is really what Momentum Center um, is all about. It is a community for people to go um, and engage with other people among their community to strengthen their mental health. Um, without such a place, um, isolation um, exists and um, and that's how community is. Um, uh, there's no fee for membership. It's a place where you are welcome to come and um, be as you are to come and receive um, help. I've volunteered, I've worked there. Um, um, I, you know, I'm assisting with um, whatever the needs are with people, whether it's um, getting food stamps, whether it's how to find a bus, whether it's how to enroll for classes, whether it's how, whatever it is with struggles that are that people are are having, um, because they can't do it by themselves, um, and uh, it's just a place where otherwise other otherwise people would be alone and um, suffering. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else in the room before we go to our online? I'm from Grand Haven. I'm Judy Mishmerhuizen, M-I-C-H-M-E-R-H-U-I-Z-E-N. And if it wasn't for the momentum, I don't know where I'd be standing right now because um, I had problems with suicidal um, in the past. And just recently, uh -huh. um, my cat wasn't doing very good, and so I went to the momentum. <clears throat> Everybody there joined in and helped me very, very much. And they all 
gather around me and help me do the best that they can with giving my cat to the vet and getting her the need and the support that she needed, the support that I needed. And then the next day, um, she was all better. And that's what the momentum is about, is coming together and supporting people and each other. And and if it wasn't for the momentum right now, I wouldn't be here right now because I'd be in heaven with my mom right now because that's where I feel like I belong. And if it wasn't for them, they they do a lot for me. And I just want to get that all the way clear and my words out very, very strong. And let me tell you, it's been a long road for me this last couple of years. And my best girlfriend passed away and that's been hard on me too. And with that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Are there any others in the room who would like to speak? What? Thank you. Did I hear someone? Mm -hmm. No. Thank you all for your comments. Is there anyone online, Patricia, who might have to make a comment? Rosalie Austin. Okay. Rosalie, you can go ahead with your comments. Hi, Rosalie Austin, AUSTI. And City of Holland. Um, I want to talk about the survey that was sent out and promoted mostly by Momentum. Renew Therapeutic Course Farms did include it in their newsletter, but why did not why didn't CMH send it out to all consumers, families, guardians? So everyone, most of the community, more community members can give input about the social rec committee program reviewing the funding for the four programs. And then also, like there is a gap on the southeast corner of the county. And we're looking at improvements to include more people. And I hope it will help with the Ottawa Area Center one week off a month that something happens for those people that need care while school is out every month. And then in the meeting minutes, I made a comment last month, but my name doesn't reflect in the meeting minutes that I made a comment. Okay. And what about the clubhouse and drop-in center? Why doesn't Momentum participate with those alternatives? And that's all for now. All right. Thank you. Is there anyone else online, Patricia? I don't see anyone else. Nope. Oh. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to the next item on our agenda, which are two consent items um, to approve by consent the agenda for today's meeting and also the minutes mm -hmm. that were sent out um, from our October 30 meeting. Is there a motion? Yeah, I was wondering if um, this would be the proper time to add a motion to um, amend the agenda, to add an item for this session. Sure. Okay. So I would request to add to the agenda discussion of the uh, Department of Public Health invitation to community mental health to share with community mental health staff the Elevators online live training workshop, Tinder, Grinder, and more, supporting people with IDB who are dating online. And I think that this is worthy of a discussion to find out if this is something with the mission and uh, vision of CMH, and if this is something we should be participating in and how we ultimately we should respond to that. I am not familiar with what you just brought up. 
Uh, I'm not sure that we are the rest of you familiar with the topic. We may need some background information before we would be able to have a good discussion around that topic. Um, if we move that to our next month agenda, would that be possible for you, Stephen? Um, I mean, I can give you a little background about it right now. That would be helpful. Um, I guess I'm wondering how people are feeling. I'm putting it out for people to respond. How do you feel about discussing a topic that we didn't have on our agenda? Or would it might we better be served if we would receive information and discuss it next month? And I'm how you guys feel. I will share with you that I've had constituents um, email me regarding this particular issue. So yeah, I don't know. Um kind of like time when it's supposed to be, I think February 14th, is that correct? Yes, on uh, Valentine's Day, February 14th. Well, would you, under um, general information on item number nine, if you could just share with us and then we can decide from there if it's something that we will need to put on the agenda for any type of vote or anything next month, but if you could please share that under number nine. Okay, that'd be fine with me. I just okay. I'd like to share this. Okay, thank you. With that discussion, the motion that as it is written, is there is there someone who would like to make that motion? Stephen, make the motion, or I can make the motion for you. But yeah, I think you no, I'm going to deal with it number nine. I'm gonna, yeah, I think deal with it under the number, number nine. nine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess I could withdraw my motion to amend, right? We're just going to move it to uh, number nine for the discussion. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> So is there a motion to approve the consent items as written? <laughs> With the addition of Rosalia Austin to the comments. Yes, thank you. Minutes, and then, um, 27, I make that motion. Support. Um, hold on one more, please. Sorry. Supported? So a motion has been made and supported to approve the consent items, adding Rosalie Austin's name as making public comment on October 30 at our board meeting. Um, is there any further discussion on that motion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Thank you, that motion. <laughs> then we will move to old business. Does anyone have any old business that needs to come up today? Hearing none, we will move on to new business. Um, first on new business, we have our service contracts, which um, was attachment A, and we have Bill here to review them with us. And if any of you missed it, we there was a revised copy sent out this morning, I believe, Patricia, is that correct? We had uh, one contract had been omitted, is that what it was? Well, we had a later arrival. Later arrival, yeah. okay. So, Bill, attachment A, if you would please talk us through those. Okay, thank you. So, we're here today to get your support and approval for nine contracts, uh, one late edition. Uh, that was something we wanted to keep moving because we've been working for a little while to help a, a family that uh, wants to use a psych psych psychiatric services through a provider, through choice. And there's been you know, different players and whatnot, and we got agreement with a place called Community Living Services. And uh, to start that, so we wanted to not wait another month to get the contract started. So that's the reason for the late addition for number nine. So um, things are a little different than last month. We have these, what, what I'm calling the one pagers that are added, uh, hopefully, that contains information to help you with making decisions. Um, that's the whole purpose of that. So I was really kind of hoping rather than regurgitating what, what's being said on those things to just kind of have a conversation about, hey, did you like that document? Or is there something you're missing? Or something that's redundant or whatnot so, so it can help you make better decisions. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I wanted to do with this. What do you think? 
I really like your one pager. It's oh, very, good. very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a constituent write email me about the renewal of the OCS10 contract. Um, and they were just concerned about whether or not that they are meeting requirements or not of the contract for the millage. And I don't know the answer to that. So I thought it would be a good opportunity to discuss. No, 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 the email is what I'm looking oh. at. So uh, this person indicates that according to the documents, documentation of the CSN, um, they are to complete the following reports. It's a monthly report, annual self-assessment, performance evaluation, Annual performance evaluation for the coordinators and MPs as an administrator, annual completion of school staff surveys, and OC FN priorities survey needs assessment. Apparently, this person is saying that they haven't updated their website since the program launched in 2017. School. So, and I don't know what our requirements for the mail should be a recipient for this particular organization. R is uh, so I guess I'm kind of looking for some input possibly. So I'm not familiar with the the qualifications you just listed. What what were they done? Uh, according to their own documentation. So um it sounds like I have a constituent who is looking into the documentation of OCFN. Um they are to complete the following reports, one of the monthly reports. Um, then there's an annual self-assessment as part of a performance evaluation, which I don't know, are the performance evaluations available online or on the website? For that particular program? Yeah. I'll have to check with them. Yeah, the personnel, that annual completion of school staff survey, and then um, OCSN priority survey and needs assessment. And that feels like something that probably need on the website. Uh, I have not worked in that arena at all, so it's just I'm, I'm seeking information. They have concerns about our um, okaying hundred forty two thousand dollars mm -hmm. meeting stated requirements. And I would have to check with them to see. It might not be on the website. That doesn't mean it wasn't done. Okay. And uploaded. Yeah, I mean, just follow up to that. Um, getting the idea, we should have more information about. Um, you know, the funding how's it being or is going to be spent yeah. on um C majors the fiduciary's manager of his money and right? yes. so what it is being spent on. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, and I would like to see some financial informational reports and uh, you know what are what are their goals, service, or, you know, their goals, services or budget. I mean, I need some clarification. I'm happy to provide more information about that program. Um, I can gather that and present it at our next meeting. If that's what you'd like. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. I, I know how to respond. I have a feeling this person does actually watch the movies or listen to the meetings. Mm -hmm. The other question that they had too is that would be they have the three weeks, three week a month school now. There's been a week that has been dropped. Um, and, OA ISD, correct? And just kind of wanted to know an update on that. And was funding like decrease? And see, you know, because it looks like there are CLS workers that are maybe support people that are funded by this. And did we decrease that funding then if they weren't providing it for the four, four weeks? That's that's not this program. It's not the same program. No. Okay. So the Ottawa, the OCSN, Ottawa Community Schools Network Program, is the, the basics of it is that it supplies uh, schools with a, a coordinator who helps to uh, link families and kids to needed services. And that can be um, mental health treatment, it can be um, food, clothing, housing, whatever they might need. So the funding we give them helps to uh, fund that whole program. It's a it's a collaborative between the intermediate school district, uh, lo several local school districts who also um, put money into paying for those coordinators and ourselves. 
So this is a coordinated position, but his um and direct some mm -hmm. services and funding that they might need. Direct some services that they or their families might need. Yeah. Uh, so I got a question on it then too. Yeah. This is at the intermediate school district, but each school should have their own school counselor <laughs> coordinator as well. This is secondary to that, or yep. So they a lot of schools do have their own counselor. Yep. This is somebody whose role really is to it's not treatment providing treatment. It's actually linking and coordinating so that. Uh, resources that aren't available can be matched up with those families. Um, it's, it's they can make referrals for mental health treatment outside of the school. They also we work they work with and the schools work with multiple local agencies who come into the schools to provide that service in school. So that um, and it's it's it might be more than what a school counselor can manage in their own caseload. Um, it might be a school that doesn't have a school counselor available. Um, and those um, those programs contract with, it's usually no cost for those treatment programs for the kids or the family. So this $142,000 a year in collaboration with the school systems then helps fund all of the services you're talking about. Yep. Yeah. So um, I know there was someone here that just a public comment. They were talking about the concerns about um, socialism, and, and I actually had you know quite a few parents come and approach me and ask about the same thing, and just kind of wondering. Um, how is that, is that something that we can get addressed or somebody can explain that? Or because I know that I haven't tried to see me um, and seek me out and mm -hmm. say, hey, they need up some concerns. You know, they should really just be teaching. Yeah, yeah, that was just somebody of a public comment. No, so no, and I don't remember who it was, but, but I do know that those are concerns. So, Quite a few parents hmm. uh, that have stopped me out, and I'm not sure how that. Yeah. So how Lucy, we... would it be helpful if Lynn were to put a little bit more in-depth information about just what the role is and uh, where the money that we are looking at mm -hmm. is going? Would that be helpful for you? Um, well, these are parents that. Have in their meetings and uh, and listening to the board that's right. there that are saying this right at the meeting. So is, is there a person there that we can so is talk there to? a person there right yeah. you know because mm -hmm. I mean those are some real concerns and and I don't know how to address those but that's something that parents are about. at the school boards? Yeah. Well I'm talking about the intermediate board. I have not been to those meetings, but these are yeah. the parents reporting back to me. But and it's saying, one person that runs this meeting? I you don't know? Okay. I don't know. That's why I guess we maybe want to look into that a little bit more, or maybe I need to look into it. Yeah, of course. And see, you know, exactly, mm -hmm. um, you know, what this is all about, because mm -hmm. these are really real concerns. Mm -hmm. I'm, ha I'm happy to look further into it. I, I guess if it would help me if you all could let me know what your specific questions are. I can definitely um, give you a thorough understanding of OCSN, um, but um, that's uh, a, a very small part of the Ottawa Intermediate School District and what they do collectively. But I can do the best I can to answer questions. Mm -hmm. The easiest way for me to kind of summarize what um, this constituent was stating is basically is there a reporting requirement in order to receive the funds from the millage because reports need to be out evidently on the website. So 
that I have no answer for. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, and a follow up question. I guess you got a whole plate full of questions. So well, um, I'd like to know if um, you know the the ISD had recently implemented this healthy relationships curriculum, and I want to know if uh, the um, OCSN is coordinating and working with them to to implement that program. You know, is there a connection? No, I, I'm not entirely sure what curriculum that is. So if you could let me know what your it involves the ISD. Okay. Or, I mean, I mean, it involves the um, IDD population. Okay. I thought you were asking if the out of county school network, yeah, if they're is, promoting it, yeah, in, in partnership with the ISD. <laughs> I'll have to ask. Them. So if you could send me your questions, I'll certainly okay. follow up on them. We want to make a motion to take that off the agenda then for today. Well, um, we're, we'll soon be at that point once we get a motion on the table, and then we can see if it needs to be amended. So, thank you. Keep that thought. Okay. So, right now we were looking at this format of the one pager, and Bill asked us for some feedback. And I think, have you gotten what you need on that uh, part? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. You know, I mean, it's going to be a fluid thing, so I'm sure, you know, a couple months down the road, it'll be like, mm -hmm. hey, we'll get, it, we'll get it, keep working on it. I think it's helpful. And if you're seeing information that I'm not there, that people that you feel you need, fellow board members, I think Bill would like that feedback too, wouldn't you? Okay. Question I just have again about dates. I know when we're getting near the end of the year, it's like it's really kind of confusing, but some of these almost are they two year contracts now? Yeah, uh, so we're trying to, like, with all the contracts, uh, 130, whatever we did, mm -hmm. you know, a couple months ago, mm -hmm. we're trying to get those into two year contracts. Now we're kind of a lot of these are grants, so there might just be one year or two years, depending on the grant. Okay. Uh, but some of the other ones, like the addition to uh, the adult foster care homes and stuff like that, we're trying to get those into that two-year cycle, too. Okay. So, yeah. So, looking at the one-pagers, I noticed on some of them, the amount was annual. And on the summary, Ooh. that was the amount written, yeah. so that would be doubled. Yes, yes. Correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, does anyone want to go in, any deeper into any of the other ones after looking at the one page summaries? I know we had some good discussions so far on the Ottawa County School Network. Well, I have a, just a general question. I know we've brought this up before about providing the contracts, and that would be too voluminous to put into a package. Um, I'm wondering if that maybe could be set up to for a day to come in and sit oh. down and look at the contracts. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, that's fine to be. Um, yeah, no problem at all going through everything. It's it's actually kind of nice to have professional of eyes looking at mm -hmm. things. Um, you know, just to make sure that that they make sense and whatnot. Now we have added. Uh, the the contract is the boilerplate for several of our contracts onto the website. So I probably should have we'll get that link to you so you can I think get I to it. Nice on a boilerplate, but yeah, yeah there's some distinctions in terms between yeah. the contracts and their significance in that. Yeah, yeah. So so that the the things on the website would be everything would be like the it wouldn't have. Heritage homes, for example, on it would just say agency and whatnot. Right. But that would be the the meat of the contract. So, but yeah, yeah, I know if you want to come on in at any point, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yeah. Okay, is there a motion um, to approve the service contracts as they have been presented? Can amend yeah, we yeah, could we'll amend it after we get the motion on the table. <laughs> okay, the, the motion is there support. Uh, it's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I've got a few questions about the contracts. Um, but the one for Bethany Christian Services, it talks about clinical completeness. 
And I'm wondering what precisely does that mean? You know, if I'm left here, is this something to do with medication therapy management? I, I don't sure what know what it means. And so uh, and it's mentions about goal writing and I don't know. Sure. What's the quality? What's is what's the standard for uh, you know, for goal writing quality? Okay. Okay, so this all comes from, this is kind of a fallout for uh, having some of the open position. And um, the supervisors, um, you know, currently, um, they're, they're also, they're doing their role. They're also covering some case management and stuff like that. And um, one of the things that we're falling behind on is having a supervisory level person reviewing the person center plan and signing off on it. Uh, that's where we get into the, Oh, the B smart goals is what we call them. So we want the goals to be uh, measurable and realistic and not repetitive. You know, that's a big thing, especially in IDD land. Oh, right. well, the same goal for nine years in a row, you know. Um, so um, to, to alleviate some of the stress that are right on the supervisors right now, we want to contract with Bethany to, to review the, the person center plans as they're being written by the case manager. Uh, just to make sure that that those you know goals are realistic and and you know and the, the clinic the clinical quality is there so that when we get audited by oh the LRE or different folks that we're in, we're in good shape so that that's really kind of the gist of it you know hopefully this will be a short term thing uh, we get the staff hired back and then we can you know just continue the contract and when you said um, a clinical completeness is that when defining is that like folding in what you mean reviewing the uh, PCPs and SMART goals? Yeah, it's making sure that all those standards of um, writing appropriate goals, SMART goals, the, mm -hmm. that's what we use here. Um, and um, they're measurable, they're objective, they're um, relevant time sensitive. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So um, that's what we're looking for in completeness. So you're looking for a time limited help of a qualified mental health professional to look at plans mm -hmm. and say for right now. Right. And what are you what is for right now? I know you have a limit of thirty thousand dollars on here, but it, I, I have philosophically I have problems with what what this is asking for, in that a supervisor of a person centered plan is the meat of everything that they do. Right, I mean, of the workers. So if I have a love, a family member, or somebody calls me as a supervisor and says da 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 da, and then I have to refer them out to a different agency to get an answer, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, I I think I can't think of what is more important to a supervisor than to have their handle on plans that their caseworkers write. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that should be numero uno, personally, but, you know. Um, Did we are doing that. We are doing that in-house. This is just some additional help for us and our contract agencies. Yeah. Okay. It, it just is, for some reason, it's a little vague. To, but... hmm. We're not subcontracting it to it. There's a long partnership with the people developing these person center plans. These are our contract agencies, yep. That we're working with. And when a parent or caregiver would not be referred to the agency, this is this is between community mental health and Bethany Christian Services, where they're supporting the work that's being done by out of the county community. Yeah. yeah, correct. I I appreciate the dilemma that, that you're in with not having the qualifications of staff here to do all this, but um, how long have you been looking for these vacant positions? Has it like been a long time? Mm -hmm. Several so, months for some of them. Yeah, this is, um, I don't know, it's a, it's a real mandate, you know, but. Uh, and it's, it's not, it's just some additional help for us. And we're gonna evaluate um, how this works. And if it, if it looks like it's something we wanna continue, then we'll look at that extension past a year, or even if before then, if it's something we feel like um, isn't worthwhile, isn't gonna help oh, us with 
some of the backlog, then we will amend that. Has this been pointed out in a review of something that uh, we're a little bit behind on getting these plans approved, or how how no, has this come? How does this come to the forefront? It's just our staff letting us know that they're struggling. Okay. Are we still looking through all each one or we're we're looking at any discussion prior to calling for a vote okay. on the motion. Uh, my question about um this beacon specialized residential sure the Cal Haven permits I understand that the town reserve and um you know, is that individual an out of county resident? And you know, I'm assuming there are no homes in Ottawa County. I mean, what steps are being done to address that so we have homes in Ottawa County? Yeah, um, you know, it can be. It could be that there all the homes are full. It could be that this home. And I'm sorry, I don't have details on this particular home. But this home could be specialized, you know, for some certain, you know, whatever. Um, with uh with Beacon, we contract for 22 homes right now and this should be the 23rd home um we might not have folks in all of those but um this was a home that had a bed available that was appropriate for the um uh, the, the, the individual and the family agreed to it so that's that's kind of why we're moving in this direction I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I mean, we do like, like our people in Ottawa yeah. County to be able to find homes right here in Ottawa County because it's a big separate from the families and their children. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're always looking for additional beds to be opened up in Ottawa County, and there are some that are um, in the works. Uh, it, it doesn't always meet our needs, though, so we occasionally have to place people outside of Ottawa County. It's not our preference either. Yeah, the personal experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then this dignified care LLC, it's Amelia Fancy. Where's that at? Uh, there's three homes in Kent County in Kentwood. Um, I can't think of the the address of it off the top of my head, but one's the old uh, Millbank home, uh, way back in the day. Uh, this new one in Amelia is actually on Amelia Street in Kentwood. Um, but they're all they're all Kentwood homes. Raises the same issue. Like, yeah. 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 Okay. Just a point of clarification, too, because having a bed in the moment when you need it is not always, you know, it, they're just not available. Mm -hmm. Do we do sharing back and forth, too? Do we have county residents that are here in Holland mm -hmm. and Ottawa County? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That might be, it's kind of hard to sort out at time of admission. Mm -hmm. Where can I go? Like the stay, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Most of our in county providers give us um, right of first refusal, meaning they'll say, Hey, we have an open bed. Okay. Um, and if we have an individual that would be a good fit, then we'll, we'll definitely take that bed. But there are times where um, we don't have it, they just won't fit the milieu or they don't need that level of care. Sure. That's not often, though. So, before admitting from another county, this is they call you most of the time. They do, yeah. Okay, they all our providers are all independent organizations, businesses, so um, they don't have to do that, but we'll do it as a courtesy. So, do they um transfer and, and then come open? Uh, mm -hmm. Transfer, do they have the option to transfer? But they can't go yeah, if someone was living in a different county and about opened up here, we were always looking to try to move folks back home. Yep. Right. Yeah. I guess I got a lot more questions. Okay. That's good. Um, about the Delta T groups, my question is um, how long has the CMH been without an RN? That's what we're looking for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, since I've been here, so it's probably about four months. Four months. Yeah. Nurses are one of the traditions we struggle to fill. And um, then moving out to the uh, BCA Detroit Neural Behavioral Indiana Hospital. Um, you know, I have some personal experience with this. Um, you know, it can be 
And I was wondering what um, we're trying, what are we doing here against an Iowa County to try and create, um, you know, places for people in Iowa County to be served here in Iowa County, even Grand Rapids, someplace closer to home without having to ship them off to you know, mm -hmm. Detroit or Indiana. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's traumatizing for both the parents and, and the child who goes to those things. Mm -hmm. Separate it, and then, you know, and it may not even, the environment may not be appropriate. As, you know, I think of Holland House, well, I think of, you know, there must be places in Grand Rapids. And then, we we, we definitely, our first choice always is to go as close to home. So um, yeah. we're, we always, Look to Holland Hospital first to see if that would be an appropriate uh, placement for a, a, a psychi psychiatric inpatient. Um, they don't take children, so um, but then if not there, we would move to the hospitals in Kent County and use those first. Um, there are times when all of those options are full; they and we, we can't place people there. So we'll at, as a third step, final step. Um, will go out of county and really out of state is our last resort. Um, we have, there's a, a crisis really going on in Michigan right now as far as psychiatric bed availability. Um, it's not just us that struggles with it, the, the entire state. Um, there's a shortage of beds. Um, there's a shortage of staff to man those beds. There's definitely work being done to try to um, address those issues. There are some new psychiatric hospitals opening up in the next couple of years. There's one in Kent County um, that's gonna be opening up and there's actually um, a children's unit opening at uh, um, one of the local hospitals in Grand Rapids within the next couple of months. And is there a certain criteria then that like you would make a determination as to whether or not it's appropriate for somebody to be um, put inpatient at Holland versus being you know, sent uh, to one of these other hospitals in Detroit or Indiana? Um, it's, it's more availability. Um, it's really, um, you know, there's a few specialty psychiatric hospitals. There's the psych med unit at St. Mary's in Grand Rapids. So if somebody had a co-occurring uh, physical health issue and mental health issue, we might particularly look for that hospital. Um, we typically look, the first criteria is, is looking close to home. And unfortunately, some of these hospitals uh, will refuse a referral, even though they have an opening, because they'll say it's quote too behavioral. You know the the, mm -hmm. the behaviors this person's exhibiting, they feel they can't safely manage that on their unit, and they just say no. Um, so you you have to keep going out. You know you can't leave people in the ER room. Um, so well, I was wondering if um, there's available or could be created some sort of facilities for people that say with IDD who oftentimes will um, manifest behaviors that gets uh, categorized as being mental illness mm -hmm. and uh, it may not be appropriate actually for this IDD person to be put in, in patient into a place where they treat mental illness and surrounded by patients with mental illness mm -hmm. um, and, you know is there any you know facilities available or in the works to uh, address that unique population in those unique circumstances? Um, that is that is a, a concern, uh, not again, not just ours, but um, hospitals tend to really specialize in severe mental illness. So folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities and autism, um, it's often hard for them to know um, how best to treat them. We've provided some additional training to our local hospitals to try to help them understand best approaches and best practice. But to my knowledge, there is no specialty um, hospital in the state of Michigan. And I, I haven't heard of one being built or organized at this point. 
you know, it, this is the kind of situation you hope you don't ever even have to use it. Mm -hmm. But when a crisis hits the fan, you can't run around and try to get a contract together. You know, when we got a real life person there that needs rapid help. <laughs> so. Did you have additional questions, Stephen? I'm assuming that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to cut you off. Yeah, just for clarification, I guess. Um, it was this living home, home care. It says license for three residents, but contracted for four residents. I'm trying to understand um, what's going on there. Oh, 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 this is, I'm sorry, this is a, a new provider in West Olive area uh, that will be opening up a home and um, it's getting the, the license in hopefully uh, for um, December finalized and they have the folks that want to move into the home already identified and uh, just getting the, getting the contract going. It's really timely because uh, we've had one home, that, uh, one of the home providers is retiring. So, um, you know, certainly, unfortunately, we're starting to see that kind of stuff. You know, some, some of the mom and pops are getting older. And and uh, so getting a new one was really, really awesome. So we have three residents in the wings and one with the potential of one more? Oh, uh, doing all oh, the... Is it going to be a license? Yeah, I'm sorry. Is it licensed for four? Maybe a license for four or three? Yeah, it's going to... It's gonna, Oh, it's going to be for four. Oh, did I put three in there somewhere? Yeah, it's a license. Oh, three. oh, so okay. Four. That's okay. Yes. No, 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 yeah. Okay. Just, uh, at first, I, I had it written in my notes as for three, and then I, I contacted the lady, and uh, it is four. It is okay. four bit. Yeah, my fault. Um, I think that's brush. Yeah, it wraps it up. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, real quick question on back to number three. So I just wanted to clarify the so the, somebody was identified that needed full time care. Um, they're going to be placed in Grand Rapids somewhere, and I was just curious. I wanted to clarify. So it's a two year, looks like a two year contract. Mm -hmm. Is it safe to assume then it's it is thirty three five eight a year annually? Is that an annual cost? Uh, oh, yeah, yes, that, that amount the, of the annual cost annual, yeah, 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 for, yeah. for one person. For one person. Okay. Yeah. 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 For, with that particular level, there's different levels and whatnot, so they're kind of all over. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> um, I'm about to call for a vote on the service contracts. One. I know. I That's what I was wondering. Yeah. I wanted to hold on item number four until next month. There was a question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So could you please state that, Gretchen? I know. That's why I have a motion. Yes. So, um, we Pardon me. I was talking. About we could amend the motion to not include Ottawa Intermediate School District in this approval. It's OCSM. OCSM. I think I am looking at number four and just reading it. OCSM until uh, further information or questions are answered next month. By Lynn Doyle, Commissioner. So there's a motion on the table. I'll support it. Thank you. Um, is there any further discussion on the motion that has been made and supported? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed, same sign. Thank you, that motion carries. Thank you, Bill. Okay. okay. Bill, thank you very much. Is that going to come on? So a man, and then you'll be after and then also under new business we'll be looking at um attachment b our october financial statement and amy's here to talk us through that hello everyone um 
presenting on the first month of fiscal year 24 statement of activities for um, period one through October 31st. Um, on attachment B, the upper left corner is our mental health and SUD fund. Uh, healthy position uh, with revenues to expenses and on track with our actual to budgeted. Um, kind of think if there's anything to highlight specifically. October is one of those months that we've talked about where a lot of the billing is still happening for the prior year. We're cleaning up a lot of that. So you'll notice that um, some of our um, expenses are behind schedule, so to speak, or they're less than, you know, we just do an average per month for year to date. So as that grows through the year, that mm -hmm. gap um, narrows our revenues, um, any that are, you know, shorter than maybe the year to date budget. Um, a lot of our payables came in November 2nd. So a lot of our Revenues for just general monthly month to month revenues were recorded in the next period. So some of that a little gap, but and you'll notice that in the bar graph on the bottom right where um, budget to actual for our Medicaid revenues is a little behind, but we're still healthy in spending and revenues. Um, the the circular bar chart on the top right. This is one of the few months where. Um, DD services is not the largest spend. Um, that's pretty much due to the fact that our residential services for October are not billed until November. So we just have payroll in that um, expenses. And um, the MI contractual services actually has a couple one-time contractor payments that they make at the first of the year. Um, so they're kind of the bigger portion of the graph, but that's still kind of um, spells out percentages by activity and by program. Um, down in the bottom left, the Millage and Grants Fund, healthy position. Um, we did include revenues in our fund balance carry forward. So there's a picture of that um, within our revenues. Um, expenses are, you know, similar to the mental health fund. We're still kind of working into all of that. We don't get a lot of our grant revenues or property taxes until after the first of the year. So some of those look like they're lagging, but our expenses align with all of that um, as well. Uh, the second page of that document summarizes the actual amounts um, by primary program. <laughs> Bar graph at the top and then um, year-to-date revenues by funding type. So, um, you know, budget to actual there. Um, any questions or? Yeah, we're in a healthy position. I know it's, <laughs> I should do like one page. Right? I have my, um, my computer expanded to like 150%. I bet you do. <laughs> I have a question about contractual services. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a, a, I guess a summary of what that would include? For either fund or? Yeah, for both general? funds. Yes, yeah, so it's just contractual services. I have no idea what that includes. So um, it would include any, it's anything that's not staff by, it's not staff from CMH. So non employee, any other service. So it can include general services for um, IT, security, um, things like that, as well as client care, they kind of go together in the same as any other contract that we have. It'd be, you know, kind of similar to the contracts that Bill presents, it's that those different contractors. So, um, yeah, it's anything that's not, it's a service, it is clinical. Yeah. It does include yeah. clinical. It's it, clinical. It's IT. Well, it includes clinical client care as well as everything else, any other service that we have. Well, so it's about administrative support services to the county. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even our administrative support. Okay. So like any of the services that the county charges CMH to operate uh, would okay. be included in that as well. I'm sorry, the administration is separate. Yes, it's possible. 
uh, practical to put together. So like uh, we build it like a, a even a one page summary of what those various you know uh, contractual services could be with a brief description. Sure. Yeah, we have. Um... Well, we updated our chart of accounts to align with some of the state reporting, and we do have the ability to get more granular on some of that. So I can work on some of those details with Lynn and you know get you some more information. Sure, I know it is a it's a big number and a lump sum of a lot of things. So right, yeah. So the the program, the programmatic details, the client care details are you know, summarized in the graphs, but, you know, it might, if you need to see it or want to see it kind of verbalized, we can work on that, sure. Or even categories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, be helpful. Yeah, we yeah. can easily do that. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, there's, there's treatment therapy, there's uh, residential, those, all those contracts we bring to you is what she's saying is put in that particular right. thing, and we can break that up by um, type. So mm -hmm. that's, that's yeah, no problem. Yeah, we'll work on that for next month. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, and I see like it looks like expenses mm -hmm. under budget, and I guess it's really hard for me to evaluate that given what you said about October billing and December billing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if these numbers actually. I'm not sure what they reflect because it looks like they're subject to continue evolution mm -hmm. into something else. So I just wonder, you know, when the expenses, you know, the money is being spent, um, you know, it's under budget. And, you know, I'm wondering, is that possible that there are certain services that aren't being delivered by the funded money? And that's why we have extra. So actually, the budget to um, the actual budget is basically a 12% split, or I'm sorry, 12 figure split. So it's an average across the entire, we take the yearly budget divided by 12 and calculate how where we should be per month. So there are times where our expenses, you know, it, we're not limiting any of the services. It's just a way to categorize our annual budget on a monthly basis, if that makes sense. So, um, that number is a threshold number that we want to watch and monitor. Sometimes it goes up, sometimes it goes down the actual, the budget to actual, um, because of, a, you know, for example, revenues, our property taxes come in January. So if you look at our year to date, they're behind for October because we haven't received much in tax revenue in October. So does that make sense? I guess I'm, it just reflects more accounting principles and Correct. what's actually being right. received and spent. No, it's it's what's being received and spent. But as far as the budget, that's how we budget. Is yeah. we have an annual budget that we calculate by. Right, I guess I'm saying these numbers I'm looking at are kind of more of a reflection of accounting principles. That's why they're they look the way they are right now. Correct. Yeah, I yeah. guess you could. That would be a way to say that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just grasping to understand it. So. <laughs> yeah. But you have open positions too, so sometimes that will mm -hmm. also be reflected in your expenses. Right. So it's not exactly. necessarily a good thing. I mean, right. right. No, yeah. right. No, you want to be spending the money that you intended to spend and um, have received revenues for. So, yeah. yeah. So it's a, you know, we're just monitoring that. And when yeah. things um, are, when there are outliers, you know, we dig into that, but everything's kind of on track. Um, <laughs> within that range. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve the financial statement as presented? So moved. Support. It's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. And oppose, same sign. Thank you. And then we have attachment C, which is our LRE combined um, monthly. And can you help us through that one, please? Sure. Um, this is the statement through the end of fiscal year 23 through September as of October, I'm sorry, November 8th. Um, 
we are closing out the year now. This is still, um, we're wrapping up our expenses through fiscal year 23, but as that last month is coming in pretty close to our projections and spending plan, um, and we're monitoring that, we'll be reporting our final um, FSR early January, and all of those numbers will kind of um, coalesce this actual spending plan that's reported here was our interim um, FSR, our interim financial statement that we issued to the state. They reconcile that as of September 30, and then we have a final reconciliation after we've gotten all of our payables in and all of our claims processed and all of our encounters reported for February, or through February. I'm sorry, in February. <laughs> so... Any other questions for Amy about that that report, the LRE report is just given to us for information because as a board, we've asked for that in the past just to know where we are with the <coughs> LRE. And thank you for putting that together. Oh, I got a question about, you know, this indication says um, less than threshold explanation. So there's no information there. What does that reflect? So this is the CMH's reporting to the LRE, and so they have a, a tolerance threshold of 5% um, over or under your original spending plan and their projections. So if you ever exceed that 5% threshold, you have to explain what might be happening. So some of the CMHs like that are in the green that are over their 5% threshold would have to explain that. And in the red, same thing. You know, throughout the year, there are times where, you know, our payables might lag or some of those explanations um, or some of those situations where we have to explain that kind of going back to what we were talking about, you know, the flow of business and where we're, you know, one twelfth of the year or each each month is categorized as a twelfth of the annual budget, but we might have a big expense or we might be saving up for a big expense or, you know, we don't pay until January. So we have a big expense there, but everything else is low. So, so no coloring is good and within the threshold is good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Any other questions for Amy? <clears throat> Um, yeah, and then the last page, there was sections here were blacked out. Right. So in fiscal year 23, only Health West and um, West Michigan were CCBHC demonstrations. So the other CMHs didn't have to report any CCBHC activity. So um, starting with our um, October statements from the LRE, which we report two months lag for the LRE financial statements, we will have some CCBHC activity reported okay. for this going forward for fiscal year 24. December. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Thank you, Amy. Yep. And now we'll move on to number eight, our executive director's report. So I wanted to introduce our new medical director. I, I apologize. Um, I, I told you three and we're a bit past three, but um, Dr. Yeah. David Franzblau, he's our new medical director. Do you want to come sure. up and... Hello. Hi. So I'm very happy to be here. Um, my patients are starting to build. And uh, I, actually, I'm in my uh, fifth or sixth uh, week. Uh, my name is David Franzblau. I came to this area uh, in 2015. Uh, throughout my career, I've kind of gone back and forth administratively uh, and clinically. Um, and most recently, uh, worked seven years for Spectrum Health. I uh, did outpatient work and was happily introduced to West Michigan. Um, being from Ann Arbor, we learned we're inculcated fairly early that that's sort of the center of Michigan. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm learning otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, it's 
delightful, really, <laughs> this, this area. Uh, so, uh, worked clinically, um, as I mentioned, seven years in the section chief, so uh, oversaw colleagues, uh, physicians, and nurse practitioners. We'll be seeing patients here, um, children, adolescents, and adults. Uh, also participating in, in um, some meetings administratively um, and uh, collaborating with, with our nurse practitioners. Uh, they have to have a sponsoring position and that, that would be. Um, I also had a very brief, after I left Spectrum, um, in uh, January, actually February, and um, wanted to try uh, a different population and a different sort of um, organization. So I took a job with WellPath that contracts services for the uh, Department of Corrections. Um, so I was actually the director and uh, the Department of Corrections um, it's just a vast network of services that are offered at 28 sites throughout Michigan. Um, it turns out that I didn't really like working for a for-profit and um, the population um, certainly deserves, you know, the, the, the same quality of care that we give outside of prisons. Um, it's, a, it's a very tough population. Um, and, um, I felt that, that my, um, uh, work probably would be more meaningful at the other end of the, the age spectrum. So, uh, after eight months, uh, I pretty much decided to leave and happily was contacted by a recruiter. LinkedIn actually is a very valuable instrument. And um, I came here and was just very, very impressed by by the staff and the culture and the prospect of the of the variety of patients. Uh, happily, an offer was made and I accepted. Yes, we'll just say welcome and we're, we're <laughs> glad you're here. Uh, okay, ask the question. Um, so how much of your time would you uh, spend, uh, you know, with individual patients or is your job going to be primarily um, administrative? Uh, you know, what's the balance? Here, <clears throat> um, my sense is that that, that it's going to tilt more toward clinical care uh, and the administrative will be, you know, uh, reviewing policies, revising as needed. Uh, uh, overseeing regularly the, the nurse practitioners, having cases presented, uh, making sure that uh, you know, the care is sound. And by the way, uh, they are marvelous from what I've been able to ascertain so far. But, and that goes for the entire staff. Yes. This is an incredibly supportive work, uh, work environment and, and culture. So I would say probably 75% clinical. Sound right, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're not, we're trying to not overload him on this first month here, but uh, <laughs> um, it'll end up being probably about, about around there 80, 20, 75, 25. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and happy to come back as needed. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll keep going on from the state. Uh, we continue. I think the biggest concern there is that uh, Medicaid unwind process, whereby uh, those folks who have Medicaid are being re-enrolled, and um, not all of them are qualifying for Medicaid again. So that impacts our rates pretty significantly uh, during the rate setting process last year, which is for this year, they, the um, actuarial firm Millman uh, tried to calculate what that was going to look like as far as 
how many people were not going to be re-enrolled, but um, it, it was an educated guess. Uh, it's too early, I think, to tell right now how how correct and accurate they were in their rate setting process, but uh, people are, are feeling a bit nervous about that. So we're keeping our eye on that. Um, and I'll give you an update on conflict-free access and planning. So I mentioned that at previous meetings, um, that goes along with uh, some home and community-based services rules that says that there has to be a separation between organizations who assess people, provide person-centered planning management um, from those who provide the actual services. So there's been a work group going on at the state at Michigan Department of Health and Human Services trying to come up with um, some policy and procedure to address that. And really there have been no decisions made yet. Um, there, there were some, uh, some possibilities options that were put out there that were not well liked and that feedback was given to the department so really they're in a process of listening to uh, various stakeholders and still trying to put together what that final policy will look like and i will keep you up to date on that as i learn more uh, from the lakeshore regional entity there's not a whole lot of new information i let you know that we have requested additional home and uh, have support waiver slots, um, and we have not heard back from the, the department yet whether we'll be uh, granted those. We've also asked the department to consider our region as a place where we could implement behavioral health homes and opiate health home programs. Uh, there are several of those throughout the rest of the state, and we haven't heard back from the state on that either. I'll let you know when we do. The region has a new veteran navigator. I, I let you know last month that the person who had been there for quite some time um, had taken a promotion at the department. So they hired a new navigator. Her name is Autumn Hartpence. And um, our staff are getting to know her so that if we need to refer people um, to that program, we can do that pretty efficiently. <laughs> So from CMH, we continue to have pretty significant staffing vacancies. We currently have 12. Um, it's hovered right over <laughs> here. Uh, again, the positions that are hardest to fill are master's level, um, psychologists, social workers, also professionals like nurses. Uh, but we're really struggling with even bachelor's level case manager positions. They're truly, we're not alone. Um, this is a problem throughout the state, and I believe it's throughout the county. Um, we keep trying different things to promote and attract staff. Uh, we do have some videos that we're wrapping up on that we'll post on social media that are intended to help people understand what kind of work we do here and why it would be a good idea to come here. Uh, we are losing some leadership positions. Cal Taylor, who's been our access program coordinator for many years is finally retiring. At the end of this year, we've um, we filled his position uh, with someone from his team who I think will do a very good job. Um, we are also losing our access program supervisor. Christy Chittenden is going to be the chief financial or chief information officer at um, Health West. So uh, looking to fill that position as well. I wanted to give you an update on the Millage Steering Committee. We've had a couple meetings. Um, but right now we have received responses back from the four social rec programs uh, that we asked to provide some detailed information about their programs. And we also asked them to send out a survey to participants to get feedback on how the programs were doing. Uh, those surveys were due back, I think, Friday or Friday. And we are in the process of uh, looking, tabulating those survey results. Our next meeting is this coming Friday. So I think we're making progress. Um, 
I told you last month about the drug take back event that happened, but I didn't have numbers at the time. We collected 436 pounds of unwanted expired and unused meds. Uh, if you combine that with um, emptying out our permanent uh, drop off sites, we actually collected about 600 pounds that for that event, which is a good thing. Uh, we had sent the board um, a survey to ask your preference on uh, prioritizing topics for future meetings, and uh, we have that ranking, and we're starting next month with, I apologize, it's not number one, it's number two, and that was access, intake process, and requests for services. Um, as one of his last things, uh, Cal's going to uh, give us a description of of what that entails. And then we'll go back to our ranking. Um, the The first one was uh, the current staff status of housing and residential school to adult world service transitions is number three. Uh, performance measures for our contracted agencies, number five, self-determination, I'm sorry, performance measures for contracted agencies is four, self-determination is five, and person center planning is six. So, We'll spread that out over the next six months and get uh, staff come to come in and provide you answers to your questions, hopefully. Um, I did send out an email. We've, we've gotten some examples of other confidentiality agreements from various CMHs, and uh, I'm happy to try to take comments that you, what things you liked from those, um, that you might want added or changed in the current draft that we have. You just need to them to me. I wanted to let you know that uh, the Community Mental Health Association of Michigan's annual winter conference is coming up in February. Uh, that's February 6th through the 7th. It happens in Kalamazoo. And if anyone is interested in attending that, please let me know and I can send you more information about that particular conference. Uh, one last thing I wanted to let you know about is that uh, we have a meeting this week. We're talking to Ottawa County Parks about how um, we might look at ways to make their parks more accessible for folks with disabilities. So we're looking forward to learning about learning more about what they currently do and, and brainstorming about some things that they might think about in the future. That's all I have. Oh, well, Link, has your question follow up about the um, you mentioned the behavioral and opiate. Um, help on um, the term behavior. What does that include? Is it something more than a mental illness? Is it ID? What exactly is it's, behavior? It's typically um, serious mental illness. Okay. So folks who have uh, some complicated complications or multi-service needs, the help homes are uh, evidence-based practices, sort of almost like a wraparound service for individuals to, to uh, really concentrate on getting them the help they need. Just a couple um, things I have too. Lynn, with the Medicaid Unwind, is there a geographic distribution that is, is it pretty evenly distributed? Will everyone be dealing with the same thing we are is the question. Um, well, yes, I think overall, um, there are definitely places in the state who have more Medicaid and Lilies that live in their catchment area in their counties. Um, it, it might be impacted uh, more in places where unemployment is not as high because people are able to get jobs which oftentimes have an insurance benefit um, and uh, will put you over the threshold for uh, qualifying for Medicaid if you if you're employed typically. So um it, it time will tell. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, also on the social rec programs, we the, really appreciate the work you guys have been doing um looking at putting surveys mm -hmm. out and everything. Do you anticipate that as a board we will be able to have that information? So didn't we do a three we month did. extension? Will we be able to have make make a you know take a vote so that people will will know where things are? Yeah, that 
that is my hope that by December we will have provided you with um, what the committee's recommendations are. Okay. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have questions for Lynn? Well, it would be more than just the committee meeting at this point. It would be an additional one before we make that point. Yeah, we'll have to have to schedule additional ones. Okay. All right, then we'll move on to item number nine, which is general information, comments, and meetings attended. I just wanted to give you a reminder as it's written there, the board member self-assessment, um, Patricia sent that out to all of us. If you have it here today, she's happy to take it. I think, did you make some hard copy? I may have hard copies here. And I, this is a CARP requirement. So um, we really would like full participation from the board on this assessment. And if I could have it back by the 13th of December, then I can have it compiled to the next one. Perfect. Thank you. Does anyone else? I'm sure I know you were going to talk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mentioned I wanted to talk about this workshop. And when it first came to my attention, um, you hold on. I was, yeah. I guess, rather stunned. Oh, I I, what I come across. Yeah. Are you? Can you hear? Excuse me. <laughs> there were a couple of people who would like to make sure they hear what you're saying. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's the effect I have on the room. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, I, I put together, wrote down my thoughts. I want to share them. Um, it came to my attention that on uh, November 14th, 2023, um, Alberta with the DPA, I guess the staff, the health educator, health promotions and planning. Uh, sent an email to Ms. Doyle, subject for staff. So I'm assuming this goes out to staff. It states February 14th, which is Valentine's Day. And the title of this is Tender Grinder and More, Supporting People with IDD Who Are Dating Online. Um, and it is followed by a web link to a workshop about how to enroll over $60. At the top, wondering how county going to be paying for staff to participate in this. And so I went to the workshop because, um, um, you know, frankly, I was surprised to see them uh, talking about online dating for the IDD population. I think about my own son. Um, and at the workshop website or description, it states in part. Uh, people with IDD want to be in relationships, but often struggle with just how to meet people. How do we successfully support someone dating online? What knowledge and skills are needed in order for people with IDD to navigate safely dating online? Explore differences between disability-specific apps, such as Glimmer and Apps for Anyone, such as Tinder, and how to talk with uh, talk about these differences with those you support. Examine how to set up a profile who will attract more people. Describe how to court someone. Uh, striking up conversations and finding someone you're interested in. So, yeah, you know, me personally, I can't imagine exploring those app differences with my son and explaining that to him and happy to helping him to navigate the web to. Um, you know, find a date, you know, given his, his chronologically, he's an adult, he has the maturity of a child. Um, and then the workshops, when you go to the link, they're presented by sexuality educators. Um, one of the presenters boasts that she's created a sexuality education curriculum that has a focus on sexual advocacy and is inclusive of all gender and sexual identities. Uh, she's also the founder of Elevators Training that is a partner with Planned Parenthood in New England. Uh, the other is the founder of Sexual Educators Supporting People with Developmental Disabilities in New York. 
the psychology today profile quote my areas of focus include sexuality relationships uh, trans non-binary gender identity issues kink poly alt lifestyle concerns end quote and i'm wondering what on earth is going on here this is being promoted uh to people like my son um and i say you know myself would you trust these presenters with your child or with autism or Down syndrome? And how about a, you know, a CLS worker that's been trained by them? Would you be comfortable with that? And so I did some additional research. And so, so let's talk about online safety and sexual abuse. Well, there's an article by Neuroscience called Violent Sexual Predators Use Dating Apps as Hunting Grounds. And it pretty much speaks for itself. Um, you know, many people turn to dating apps like companionship, love power, our researchers find sexual predators using these dating, app, dating apps to secure new victims. And uh, victims of mental illness, other vulnerabilities were the most targeted, and the attacks were significantly more violent. And then there's an ARC publication that likewise speaks for itself. Sexual abuse of people with IDD, a global scandal. Uh, between 97% and 99% of assaults are committed by someone the victim already knew. Approximately 44% of perpetrators are connected because of the victim's disability. And then the National Institute of Health, National Library of Medicine publication is titled Prevalence of Sexual Abuse in Adults with Intellectual Disability. Systematic Review and Meta Analysis. It states the most prevalent profile of abusers appear with intellectual disability. Some one in three adults with intellectual disability suffer sexual abuse in adulthood. Special attention should be paid for early detection intervention in high risk situations. And of course, we know what the mission, you know, the CMH is part of people with mental illness, IDD, substance use disorder, community improved lives, premier mental health agency. The vision is to enhance quality of life of all residents. And the uh, 20, uh, for year 24, uh, strategic priorities were improved access to care, staffing and retention, quality system of care, including housing, transportation, autism services, and integrated health care. And then likewise, a summary of the stakeholder for 2023 identifies its priorities, housing, access to services, staffing, and transportation. Um, nowhere, is, as I perceive, see this, is sexualization the IDD population identifies a priority by the CMH or the community. And so um, I think this um, is a topic that we need to discuss and um, as a board decide if this is appropriate for uh, us to be involved in in any way and sharing it with staff in any way uh, and whether we should be you know, taking a, a position about this one way or the other about the appropriateness of this. Amen. <clears throat> Can you find more information out on whether um, why this particular subject was selected as a health indicator? It seems to me, particularly for IDD population, that there are other subjects that might be more appropriate. Well, part maybe there are numbers that I don't know about or surveys mm -hmm. that have been sent out, you know, for rationale for why. But I, you know, I've had several people contact mm -hmm. with concerns about this. You know, I was pretty stunned because that would be subject matter. Well, I struggled with with adults, uh, yeah, in, in college, uh, family members. So, yeah. Part of that training um, also talked about online safety, uh, safety for online dating, and our folks. Um, I, d I don't have statistics, but I would imagine that some of the people who are serving use online dating apps. Um, I think a lot of people in the world do. So um, when I saw that advertisement, that's that's what I noticed was there was going to be some discussion about um, safety and helping people that we serve um, learn safety skills about online dating if that's what they are are involved in and that's what they're choosing to become um, to, to use as a help, way to help find a date. 
So um, I'm happy to find out, it, um, you know, Stephen sent this to me. Um, it, I don't know that it was particularly singled out. We we got, I got um, not terribly fre frequently, but I get uh, training announcements from a variety of people. Um, and uh, I often forward those on. I don't always forward them on. Um, we're not promoting this. We're not advocating for this. It was information that was shared. But I'm happy to find out anything more you would like me to find out. So what, what drives this particular mm -hmm. kind of education opportunity for health education for the IBD population? It feels like to me that, and this is to me that I was going to chime in, that you know, health-related subjects for that population are like, are you eating well? Mm -hmm. You know, teaching them how to cook when some of the social work mm -hmm. programs, um, you know, things more about kind of the basic needs and what families and, and um, guardians who love, you know, mm -hmm. on this particular population, help them, guide them through the dating process. It's such a dangerous world out there, and I appreciate the safety piece of it. But even you know, young adults, um, you know, in college, you know, struggle with these particular applications. And it, yeah, it concerns me because there's data collection that can occur. There's a theft, um, you know, because of access to mm -hmm. private, you know, information identifying information. There's just mm -hmm. there's a whole realm of possible risk there. That I feel concerned, like they can get their social security number, they can get sure. credit, they can get mm -hmm. oh, things like that. Um, that just the whole like a, online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, and not, I think that's I think where I, I was going was it would, you know, um, if we were supporting people and helping people, it would be good to know that information. Again, um, I don't, I have not had any requests for staff to go to this training. Um, we're not. I'm I'm not saying this is something all staff should go and participate in, but um, I you know I also feel like um, it it is not a bad thing to know information so that we can help the individuals we serve um, with what comes up in their lives. That's not to we don't we we are we're arranging dates for people. We're not recommending yeah, that people right. do this. That's what I'm afraid of. It's like it's going to be interpreted from that context, right? That we're promoting it, and that uh, you know, it's like when we are arranging these things, and, and if somebody is taken advantage of, yeah. you know, can that fall back on you know responsibility onto the county mm -hmm. by providing mm -hmm. you know an education that way? And it so, just feels like it, it's something we shouldn't even delve into at all. Okay. You know, I would rather have Chris teaching more about food, you know, appropriate cook, you know, like mm -hmm. cooking, how to cook. And appropriate food choices, health related, yeah. than application, you know, dating applications. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Those things certainly go on as well. I mean, it's not excluding those things, but no, what, yeah. this is a particular training that information was passed along. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? And at this point, no one has taken advantage no. of requesting to participate in the training. No. Um, do you, as a board, are we feeling like we need further discussion on this to know um, if we want to make a recommendation or do you, or are you feeling like this has helped us to find out just what it is? I don't know. I mean, we should be thinking about that down the road because, you know, like you were saying, you know, our involvement in this in any way could be a reflection in the CMH. And then I think it's a positive reflection. And in fact, when I read this stuff, I think with anything, we should be sending out warnings, you know, about dangers of this the online period, not just how can you safely navigate over the thin ice, but just stay off of the thin ice altogether. <laughs> there, there are so many dangerous unintended consequences to framing this as a uh, you know opportunity to help people and um, I, I don't I don't know that it, I don't know that it is <laughs> not as a parent except not all people have parents involved um, <clears throat> you know when we were in school we were 
your teaching does say no, do not give any personal information mm -hmm. to anyone. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, because there are people, and we had people here today that do not have parents. Who is going to guide them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be their neighbor. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be somebody from the township or Holland to Grand Haven. Who is going to do this guiding? Mm -hmm. It's not that we have to be trained in a particular method. It's just what do we support and how are we going to train people who don't have the family support? We know people that were here. We know people personally. Mm -hmm. that do not have family support. What are we going to do? Do you think it's the work of the county, though? It's the only, I, I'm afraid of the risk. I really, truly am. You know, if, what if we have an agency that we're supporting financially that somebody comes to and says, this is happening, or this is happening, does that fall back on us, even though it stops the way? We can't control everything that the agencies that we're partnered with do. Right. But in this case, direct direct teaching of how to navigate. Yeah. But to say no, we have to weigh. And I think we got to be careful too. Not everybody's the same. Right. right. And there are. I agree. If, if someone is really vulnerable and and doesn't have the ability to make safe choices and we got to help protect those folks but i do think that there are adults that are able to maybe go that route and i don't think we should um, restrict people uh, in, in a way you know what i mean it's like uh i i, I understand the slippery slope you know, to the whole thing, but I don't want to put everybody in that category and people need choices, you know, and there are people within this population that have the ability to make good decisions. And hopefully... But it sort of makes the argument to the contrary now. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, I, I agree. But I would just like to know more about the numbers of people. You know, it's like, in, why this particular subject was being brought forward as a... Right. Um, and what, not, maybe what else have they done? And maybe there's not, and there are numbers there that I'm unaware of. But, you know, it's like, I, knowing what I feel to be the, the potential risk for the county, you know, just if something bad happens, especially to somebody who's more vulnerable and you know where it gets out that we provided education on Tinder and grinder you know that's the well that's a concern I think really yeah mm -hmm. so just yeah it, is it really water that we want to wade into don't give your information to <laughs> <laughs> so are there continuing education units attached to this class? I mean, just out of curiosity. Mm -hmm. is, this, is this a CD class or is it just a general? I don't think it was. Class? I don't think it had C continuing I mean, education. It's not attached to any policy that we're making that this is going to be a new direction we're heading. No. It came out of public health, who we don't have a lot of control over the email they send out. That's not something that we can um we can merit it's not for the people that we serve it is to help the people who help the people that we serve um at their discretion um mm -hmm. which we as a board trust them to do um yeah. so from that point of view i mean this is a there's not a lot of there's not a lot of draw to it if the people that help the people that we are here to serve don't feel that it's important, then they shan't take right. it. But um, we're not, ad administration isn't advocating this. Administrators, as administration passed it along as I get a thousand trainings that come out of our organization and most of them go right into my trash folder. Um, because it's the equivalent of like junk mail. Um, if one's good, then I'll grab it. But this, that 
point being aside, um, I don't think this puts any, I don't think this puts any focus on us as advocating for or against something. If we're just offering staff something that might help them with someone right. who doesn't have anybody or who is um, in a position where they have the capability of conducting a relationship of that nature. Um, I realize that we are, are, we're inclined to think of, you know, the people that need the most, but there is a huge spectrum, spectrum of people that we serve, mm -hmm. um, a significant portion of which might encounter something like this. And mm -hmm. um, that information about how to navigate and to not give your information out might be the thing that actually helps them. Um, again, that's what we trust our staff to do. That as a nurse who does actually um, participate in the education unit, I get to select those things, and it would be driven based upon my work world and what it was I was encountering. And that's a choice that I make as a professional to take a course like that. Or Which not. is what we're asking our professionals. It, it wouldn't be. It would not be a pass through through my health system or it, as an organizational decision. It just wouldn't. Um, I, I'm concerned about the risk, Chris, and that's. Because it just takes that one. And I think that we do have a wide spectrum, absolutely. Um, but those who are requiring CMH services are probably those that are most vulnerable too in our population. And I just think we I'd like to know more information about about the course and rationale for why selecting it. I think it, it, it's not until February, correct? Right. So maybe I I'm happy to find that out. I you know, I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. This was a training that announcement that was sent. It got forwarded to staff with no information like you should take this or this is mandatory or we're requiring this or we endorse this. Um, we the previous week I sent out a training announcement on um, human trafficking. So we I, we get those and we pass them on. Um, a lot of times they're free, which staff are looking for free CEUs. Or, um, but um, oftentimes there are, there's a payment associated with it. So I guess if what the board is saying is um, there there was a, and I can send you the announcement. It sounds like some people have seen it, but others haven't. There, there was definitely a section in there that said um, how to be safe how to help people be safe on an online dating app. And that is what um, caught my attention as something that could possibly be helpful for staff to know how to support people in, in if they ever were on a dating app, how to do it safely. It's your Carrie's point, don't get out, don't give out your information. Um, this wasn't, uh, the staff at CMH were not told you should go to this, we endorse this. We highly recommend this. It was passed on. And if what you're saying to me is um, we should not be passing along information that has anything to do with online dating, I'll note that. But I'm not sure what else the next steps are here. No. Is there anything where we paying for the class at all? Or are we what? I'm sorry. Are we be paying for the class for the CEUs for the county paying for that? We're I don't not have seen it. That's no. no. We have to be on their own. Yeah, we occasionally pay for trainings, but um, it's up to the supervisor's discretion what gets paid for and what does not. We have a training budget per team. So if staff were taking this on their own, I wouldn't have any idea. Right. Um, if and we were going to kind of different, it. if you choose to take it on your own, that's right. one thing. When it's promoted, it feels right. like it's promoted. When it gets pushed through the county, then it feels like it's promoted by the county. And that's where I think there is potential risk, you know, in the event that something happens, if we provide the training, if somebody does get advised, if something bad happens, mm -hmm. heaven forbid, you know, mm -hmm. is there risk to the county? Well, you know, there are risks to everything. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There I are. Mean, but there is if risk you sit out in our waiting room, you're going to say, oh, my gosh, this person going to go out and get hit by a car. So, you know, it, it, the risks are phenomenal. Mm -hmm. That's why you know you have professional staff that are trained, um, especially in the area of ethics. They all have to have ethic training. Um, you know, we have to trust staff to make good decisions. I don't think withholding information from people is a good way to go. 
the information is available to them. Right. I agree though not to promote them, oh, okay. but okay. Yeah, this, this the whole idea, the concept of this, I just found you know shocking that you got this yeah. email passed on to you in the very first place. I mean, you know, the chair with staff and I'm saying it. Oh, this is incredible. Why would this even be uh, thought a consideration to send this to you? What if somebody said, you know, here's an app, here's a, a website for uh, subscriptions to Hustler the Mask um, Man's Goat Magazine for staff? You know, right away. No, I'm not passing. No, right. stop. What on earth are you sending this to me to me for in the first place? Right. This is inappropriate. And that's how that struck me as this is just inappropriate. Um, why are you sending this to me? No, I'm not going to share this with staff. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, um, there I'll send it to the rest of the board, but uh, there was um, a section on there about safety. Mm -hmm. And and when I saw that, that was my uh, reason for passing that law. I'm not, um, I understand what you're saying. I understand your concerns, truly, I do. Um, but there, it was, there was more to the announcement. I mean, you read through it um, that suggested that it wasn't just about getting people dates. It was about online safety. Well, and there's a message there too about the presenters. I think that illustrates a lot of what this workshop is all about. And it's not just about, you know, online dating safety or even having a focus on it. There's, there's a, a message being sent by these presenters who are not like specialists and IDD, these are, you know, they, they call themselves sexual educators. Um, you know, just the message itself seems to be uh, inappropriate and a trouble. So that's why I brought it to everybody's attention. Mm -hmm. So at this point, Lynn, if you're planning to send that out to all of us mm -hmm. and we'll have a chance to read it through and evaluate for ourselves, determine if more mm -hmm. discussion is needed. Um, does it have course of objectives? Oftentimes, a CEO is picking a course of objectives. Did you say that? Right oh, you don't know. Is there any way we can get a hold of that? I don't remember CEOs. saying that. Okay. No. Yeah. So, yeah. Not really even sure if it has CEUs attached or not. Okay. The unfortunate thing is, we do have people we work with that are involved. Mm -hmm. Okay. And online dating, we do have that are sexually active. Um, you know, where do we step in if they come and ask for advice? Anyone getting some information like that would be helpful. Yeah, that's the, the rationale. Right. right. Unfortunately, you went through the school system as many years as I did. There were all sorts of things that were brought to our attention. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and and then you know, just thinking out loud with all of you too. Then you think if you don't have the information to give them on safety and and just to be able to talk openly, where will they get it if they aren't people who have a family that yeah. supports and discusses with them? So I think. There's, there's just so much to think about as we look at this. So probably the sure. next step, taking a look at that fire is right. Right. Good to Any other um, comments or meetings attended? All right. And then um, this is our final opportunity for public comment. Peggy yes, I'd like to speak. We'll come to you in, in a minute. We'll do our um, in the room. People All right, first. sorry. No problem. Thank you. Peggy Fockler, City of Holland, F-A-K-L-E-R. I'm the director of the Art Advocacy and Resource Center, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of information that I have been contacted by representatives of the Ottawa County Schools Network. The type of thing that they have wanted me to gather information on to share with families is what are alternatives to guardianship? What is the process for applying for guardianship? How do families find those people who need to apply for guardianship? Do I know of evaluators who perform the necessary psychological evaluation that's required prior to a guardianship hearing? 
I've also been asked to come talk to classes at Ottawa Area Center and Young Adult Services about those topics. I've also had parents ask me, I'm the Ottawa County Schools Network, Network Representatives, where do I send families when they want to apply for SSI? What's the process? Where, where do we do that? So those are the kinds of requests that I've received at the ARC. It's sharing information with the Ottawa County Schools Network people who have families requesting this information. They're like, I don't know. <laughs> Let me call Peg me. <laughs> so that's what, what the contact that I've had with them. And in my opinion, those have all been very appropriate that they've been reaching out to me to try to help families with that kind of information. Thank you. Anyone else in the room with a comment? I'm hi, Sarah Westheis. I live in Hudsonville and I have an ad adult daughter with disabilities. And you say there's um, risk with everything. Why bring that risk in? She has a mind of a child. She doesn't drive. She lives with us. Um, she's never going to climb the corporate ladder. She's totally different than someone with mental illness. So don't even put them in the same category. Um, having an online dating service is appalling. I would never want that for her. They, she was taken advantage of at a group home once. And um, no, it, this is just appalling. The mental illness, there should be two categories for one thing. I've said this my whole life. The adults with disabilities, they are childlike, innocent, and they, it's, they are nothing like people with mental illness. Mental illness, they can drive, get a job, climb the ladder, get married, have kids. There's a totally different. And you say there's risk with everything. Well, why even put that out there? I don't know how many people here have a child with disabilities. Not a mental illness. I know you do, and I'm glad you're on the board because you're standing up for them. But you have no clue unless you have a child. We didn't know anything about those services either. You know where you could send them? Send them to parents. We don't have. No one told us where to get SSI. We had to find it out for ourselves. You know, no one gives us the the messages that. And there's less services for the kids with adult disabilities. My daughter goes to a. She went to Indian Trails for a long time, and now she goes to a program and. There's not even busing where we live. There's no transportation. I was I was like, wow, how did they get transferred here? You know, they got to stay all day till four o'clock. That's amazing. My daughter only gets to go, we have to drive her from nine to three, a couple of days a week. And you know, she don't even get it every day. So just that online dating thing, just you no, know, does not sound good at all. I wouldn't even open that can of worms. As a parent, I would not mm -hmm. like that at all. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? Yeah, I do. Um, it's Beth Van Hoven from Georgetown Township. I, I'm kind of confused sitting here. My my son, too, our son is in in a program we're doing self-determination now. So I sit here, too, and I, I look at these buses, and I think all these kids are, I, I don't know how they're funded, how we're trying to fund a program to keep our kids in a program. Um. And then what you say, you know, we're, we're talking about guidance on the internet for sex education, where most parents I know want to know how they get guardianship, who to go to. OAC or uh, Ottawa area used to have a psychologist there to do guardianship. So now people are looking for guardianship. Where are the homes? Where can I get services? To me, I would think you would go to CMH for that. But we're finding that it's such diversified. <clears throat> I don't even know all the acronyms anymore that you're talking. It's like you create more acronyms to make it more confusing. Mm -hmm. So it just seems like we have a budget, we have money coming in, and we can supply money going out. I, I'm confused by there's such lack of services. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else in the room? Then we'll go to our online participant. <clears throat> Rosalie Austin. Hello, Hello again. Rosalie. Rosalie. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Rosalie Austin, AUSTIN, City of Holland. And yeah, I agree with those parents online dating. Yeah, some education about safety is helpful, but my girl would be a target. 
and it's yeah don't even open that can of worms but also <laughs> the contract with bethany for looking over the ipos's are they what training is involved for them because it's for the mental illness people but how familiar are they with the actual pcp process and that's a whole thing mdhhs had continuous quality improvement for training supports coordinators how is bethany how familiar are they with the service array i worry that if bethany's looking at the plan maybe they don't know actually but it is a good thing for conflict free access and planning and it opens the door for independent supports coordinators which has been available as an option to choose we've had independent supports coordinators for a couple years in ottawa county now and not many people know the service array and the provider network directory doesn't really spell out what is already contracted that you have a choice of providers. So thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else online? In the room? Okay. Yes. Um, oh, hold on. Someone online. Yes, sorry, go ahead. Okay. You can go I'm, first. I'm Don Scheel from West Island. It's S H E I L L. In this meeting and every meeting, we talk about how it's hard to attract staff, good staff. And yet, we've spent 20, 30 minutes here talking about how to restrict the education of the staff that we have. How Maybe the board is going to tell the staff that we don't want them to talk to clients about sexuality, that we forbid our professional staff from going there. We don't want our professional staff knowledgeable about sexuality online and the hazards and all those aspects. We want our professional staff to pretend it doesn't exist. This is extremely alarming to me. How are we going to attract and retain good staff if we restrict them that way? Thank you. Thank you. And now there's one other participant online. No, no, there's no, nobody yes. has raised it. Oh, hold on. I, is somebody there? Hello? Yes. We're here. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry for being interruptive. <laughs> my name my name is Lith Narmore. N is a Nancy. A R M is a Mary. O R E. Um, I'm speaking um about Momentum Center. Um, and I just I feel supportive and have been going to Momentum Center for four plus years. Mm -hmm. Um, they've helped me and. Um, many ways while I live down in Grand Haven and I still volunteer and a member as um, more or less a volunteer when I come down to Ottawa County Grand Haven Momentum Center so I can participate, be with friends, um, help the staff when needed, mail out letters, get whatever activity they need need done and as i see uh, since we moved from columbus to seventh I, um, I have seen fresh faces come in and that make, to me tells me we're making an impact and doing great for our community now um i have gone back and watched um previous cmh meetings and um, even Board of Commissioner meetings of Ottawa County. And it just breaks my heart. I just feel maybe I'm taking it too personally, but um, I grieve every time I see a board meeting that um, we could be 
that your funding could be pulled from uh, the momentum centers, social rep programs. That that just breaks my heart and makes me sad, and I grieve for everybody that <sighs> might lose this program, which is important to them. Thank you. Thank you. We have one more person in the room who would like to comment. So, I mean, I came to last month's meeting and this Wait, month. Please. And, oh. Um, oh, Julie Northley, N O R K O L I, out in Grand Haven. Thank you. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the Momentum Center. And from what I understand, they receive like $22,000 per month. And I look at well, what are they doing? And I see this bus come here and a whole room full of people. And this is how they're spending their afternoon. It feels like um, they're taking almost taking it. Are they taking advantage of them? Are they putting them out front to advocate for their funding? How much money does it really cost to run a program like this? What are they spending their money on? Um, $22,500. What do they do? Movie nights and dinner once a month? But then how, how much does this bus cost? And how much does these renovations cost? And I wonder, you know, obviously people need support. And you can see it in the people that speak here. I mean, they're really emotional about it. But I just wonder if there's other alternatives um i saw a photo of barbara v on the um on the internet on the back of a camel in um i think morocco or something and for they're doing cultural immersion so i'm wondering you know they they fundraise based on um the helping mentally ill people and people give them money, but then they do cultural immersion, and it looks like a vacation to Morocco. And I have a lot of concerns about taxpayer money going to fund those kinds of things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else with a public comment? Then um, at this time, I would like a motion to meet in closed session. Um, and we will be um, covering an item that is, um, we'd like to consider information that is not under the Open Meetings Act and does um, not require public disclosure. So I'd like a motion from someone on the board to go into closed session. So we'll move for it's been moved and supported. Is there any further discussion among? I need a roll call vote for this time. Okay. Do we have to say what type of subject it is? Mm -hmm. I think from transparency. Yeah, section 8A. I know, I, know I read it. Yeah. If it's litigation, mm -hmm. security, or no. personnel. For, uh, it's personnel. It's personnel. But yeah, it doesn't, it's not required in the motion. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Ms. Cosby. For voting? Yes. Yes. Um, Ms. Evil is gone. Mr. Bofer? Yes. Mr. Kleinitz? Yes. Mr. Monroe? Yes. Mr. Parcher? Yes. Mr. Parnin? Yes. Mr. Savage? Yes. Ms. Vandersloan? Yes. Okay. 